Hello there everyone, I'm Christina of CSL Designs and today I'm going to show you how to make these beaded and intertwining macrame rings. So these are the two that I made and they're both exactly the same technique. I just made one in black card and then one with white to show you the difference but also to make them match a previous set that I've made. So I've been wanting to make these rings for quite a while to make them match, like I said, a set of the same technique. So these are bracelets that I previously made. These are the first ones that I came up with. Again, you can see the black and the white cord there so they match just nicely and it's the same basic technique and effect that we get all the way along I just then made the ring version here so these are the bracelets I've also made earrings to match so again black and also white again that same technique but just making this nice graduation so that's the earrings and finally I've also made some necklaces to match again black and white so you can really see now adding these rings are going to complete the whole set. So I already have tutorials on these other pieces. You can easily find them. I'm going to have a playlist down in the description box below if you're interested. But like I said, I've then chosen to make these rings to match the full set. So I just wanted to show you what they look like on as well. So you can see you have that beaded section, the intertwining effect at the front as the main feature of the ring. And then the ring band going all the way around is also nice and comfortable to wear because it is all just made of cord. So these are mine here, just in the black and white. Now I've only ever made them in black and white, the whole set. So I would love to see what these look like in colors as well, in other different colors. So if you do decide to make these or anything else for that matter for my tutorials, I would love to see it. So whether it's tagging me online or whether it's sending me pictures of it, please do feel free to do that. You're gonna find all the information that you need for that down below in the description box. But if you wanna learn how to make these rings, please keep watching. So these are the materials that I'm going to be using. First of all, the card that I have is a 0.5mm Eslon. I'm just using a black colour to be a nice background contrast colour against the beads that I'm using, but obviously you can use whatever kind of colour that you want to. And then as for the beads, we just need two different sizes here. So first of all, this silver and this copper, they're 3mm rounds. So they're going to be running down the centre. And these ones here, again, they're silver and copper, they're 2mm rounds, so they're tiny little ones. And I'm just using metal spacer beads here, but you can of course use whatever beads that you want to. And you can check out the description box below the video there for the material that's written now, and also any links for any of these materials that you might need. So let's get all the materials ready, and let's get started. We'll then need some different lengths of our cord. So first of all, I have a length of about 25 centimeters. This is going to be the holding cord, so it's the shortest one. And then I also have two lengths of about 70 centimeters each, and these are going to be working cords. And then again we need another two lengths here of about 60 centimeters each and these are also working cords. So then the first thing I did here was take my shortest length of cord that I cut ready, so the holding cord, and I've attached it onto my mini macrame board, just in these notches here, one on the top and then the opposite one on the bottom. Makes it much easier to work with. And then we can just attach and reattach how we need to. And then to that I'm going to then attach my working cords. So I'm going to start one at a time. So first of all I'll take in one of my long ones. And then what I do is we need to find the middle of it. So I put the ends together. So fold it over in half basically. To then find that midpoint, I keep hold of that with my fingers. And then I wanna attach it by sliding one end of this working cord underneath the holding cord that's on the board here. And then bring it all the way under to the midpoint there and then I like to just kind of push it down with my finger to keep it in place because then I need to attach this using a square knot. So I bring one side over first then I take the other side over that and then underneath in the middle there make sure you go underneath the working cord and the holding cord and then up on the other side through that loop. So this is a basic square knot. If you're not familiar with macrame knots I do have a basic tutorial that shows in detail how to do them. And then you just tighten that. And then we start with the other side. And it doesn't matter what side you start with, as long as you stay consistent. Because that was just the first half that we just did. Now I'm going to do the other half and tighten that. And now this is one full square knot. So you just want to attach the four working cords in this way. So once I've attached my four working cords here, I just want to mention that the top two are the long ones that were cut, and the bottom two other shorter ones so that's how you want to make sure to attach them as well and also just make sure when you've attached each of them you push the knots nice and close together so there's no gaps between them there either. And then now what I'm going to do before we continue making any more knots here I want to release my holding cord 
from the bottom slot there and then I want to add on my beads in the middle so I'm going to just take one at a time add it onto the cord and then just let it drop all the way down there I'm going to add all four of the beads that I'm going to use and I'm just doing it in this order so alternating between them but obviously you can do it however you choose depending what materials that you're using so the third one and then also that last one just let them drop down and then I'm just going to reattach the cord in that bottom slot nice and securely so it doesn't come loose while we're working with it so there we go and then we can just push these down temporarily and then just bring up one at a time when we need them so then to continue making our knots what we're going to do is start from the top here so first of all I have my cords coming out to the side what you can do as well as these two bottom ones to kind of get them out of the way a little bit I'm just putting them into a slot down the side as well just to help keep it a bit more organized just so they don't get so much in the way while we then start working with the top one so what I'm going to do is take the top two on either side just do one side at a time but I'm just bringing them down just bring them down over the other ones going out to the side so just like that and then just start on whichever side you prefer doesn't really matter then what we're going to do is start using a vertical lax head knot so we have these two cords in this case I'm starting on my left side so we have the top one is kind of the outer one as they're coming down and then we have the bottom one of the two is kind of the inner one there so what I'm going to do is use the inner one or the bottom one depending how you look at it to make the vertical lax head knot I'm going to do that first of all so I'll go over the holding cord so I said the inner one there is the working cord the outer one is the holding cord the working cord goes over the holding cord back around underneath it and through the loop so it just loops around the holding cord like that then we tighten this all the way up right next to those two square knots where these cords are coming out from and then the other half is we take it underneath back around over and through so just the opposite basically and then tighten that and then we have a first vertical lax head knot sitting right there and it's kind of coming outwards now away from the two square knots now we also need to start adding in beads so I'm going to get my holding cord ready that's this one and then get one of my two millimeter beads and then what I want to do is just check here because I'm using alternating colors the first bead that I added in the middle is copper so that means on the outside here I want to use silver first so basically the opposite and just get this bead onto the cord very tiny so got that on there fine for now let it drop all the way down to sit after that knot now we need to repeat the knot again but on the other side of the bead to cage it in so I take the working cord over, back around underneath and through so it loops around the same way and then tighten that making sure that bead stays between the knots like that and then we'll go under, back around, over and through and then tighten that so we now have a knot on either side of that bead and then to continue I add in the next bead onto that holding cord let it drop down and just do the same thing using that same working cord make another vertical lax head knot cage that one in so that's two beads now then I'm going to add a third one here I can find the little tiny hole and let it drop all the way down as well the exact same fashion and then make another knot after that so we keep caging the beads in place by making a knot after just like that and now I have three beads on this side here so I'm just going to leave that side for now then because I've added the beads that I need to then on the other side I'm just going to go over to there and do the exact same thing but obviously now it's just kind of mirrored because it's on the other side here so a mirrored image but again same principle the inner one is the working cord and the outer one is the holding cord so we start by making the vertical lax head knot around the holding cord just like that and then we need to add a bead in 
to the holding cord, so the outer one. Just get that on there. And also let that drop all the way down. So we're just doing the exact same as we did on the other side. But like I said, it's just in a mirrored image really. Kind of working with opposite hands as well. And to cage that in, do another knot. And basically you just want to add three beads on this, on this side here in the same way that we did on the other side until obviously they're both the same. So now I have my three beads on either side here and I've done three beads on the other side for this section because that will then fit perfectly. And I then push up my first bead there all the way up till it can't go any further. And then what we need to do is bring these down and connect them underneath this bead and adding the three beads on either side fits just nicely with that. If we add any more, that would be too much, or any less, that would be too little. But then, what we need to do is connect them there. So you're going to find, on either side, on either of these rows with beads on the outside edges, you have still the holding cord that's still towards the outside, and then the working cord that's kind of wanting to naturally come in towards the middle, middle and cross over there. So what we're going to do is actually use the working cord from either side, so the inner one, and then basically just make a square knot around the middle holding cord here that's holding the larger beads. Just make a square knot there, making sure that this gets tightened underneath that bead that we've already pushed up. And then just do the other half of it. Just get the cord under there. Now before I tighten this other half, I'd like to just re-tighten the first half because as you can probably tell it's kind of sprung open a little bit. So I like to just tighten that to get, so it gets to the point where I know it's in position. I put my fingers on either side to make sure it stays there, otherwise it'll just spring open again. And then I tighten the other half. And that will then keep it in place nicely. So just like that. So now these two outer rows that we just made with the three beads there are attached nicely in the middle. So what I'm going to do now is these two cords on either side that we used, I'm actually going to then take them and bring them out to the sides, into the slots there, just to get them out of the way, because we then need to move on and use the other ones for the next section. And what I also just like to do here is this knot that we just made to attach the sides in the middle, I like to just push that up so it becomes as tight underneath that bead as possible. You can also release the holding cord and do it more easily if you need to. But then what we're going to do is take the top lengths, the new top ones now, getting the two on either side, release them from the side and then I bring them down and over the other ones just keep the other ones here out of the way into those handy slots on the side of the board here something a bit like that and then we basically need to start doing the same thing that I just did so again start on one side now we just got to make sure because these cords are now coming out from underneath the rows that we made before, that we pick the right one as the holding cord and the right one as the working cord. So you can just lift it up a little bit if you need to and see which one is the top one and then which one is the bottom one. So that's like this for me. Just get these back top. So that bottom one or the inner one, we start out by making a knot and tighten that and make sure that knot gets tightened all the way in next to those square knots in the middle so underneath this row of beaded knots on the side and then the other half of it and now we need to start adding in the beads as well so because the next bead in the middle is silver that I'm bringing up that means I'm going to use copper ones on the outside here so I just grab one of my tiny little copper ones and let that drop down so it sits after that first knot then I make a knot after it to cage it in and then add another bead so this is basically the same technique as the first little section there with the silver beads on the outside the only difference is now because we have a further distance for this to travel because before these only had to come down and go below one bead now I've added in so these are actually going to cover two beads in the middle what we need to do is actually make four 
add four beads here on either side. So just do that and the same on the other side as well. So now that I have my four beads on either side there, we then need to attach them in the middle just like we did before. But before doing that, remember to push up that bead in the middle, so that's a silver one, the next one. And then we use the inner cord on either side here. Just make sure that the last knots are nice and tight. And then we use them to make a square knot in the middle to tighten them together. Make sure to tighten that underneath that bead. And just like before, because it kind of springs open there, I tighten that first half completely how I want it to sit and hold it with my fingers before then tightening the second half properly, which is going to then hold it in place. Pull that nice and tight. So there we go. And again, just also make sure to push everything together in the middle so there's no gaps between beads and knots or anything. So there we go. So now these two cords that we just used on either side are put back out into the slots on the side, the handy little slots there. And then we can go on to the next section where I'm going to release the top two on either side, the new top ones, bring them down over. And we basically just want to start making our next rows here, the next section, in the exact same way. But it's even more important now that you just make sure you use the right cord for the right job. Just flip it around and then look where they're coming out from because they're coming out from that square knot where we connected the silver ones together but only one of the cords here on the side was used to make that square knot so what you want to make sure to do is this cord that was used to make the square knot with that's the cord that we want to use as the working cord and the other one is going to kind of be a bit more the top one so make sure that you separate them properly and then, otherwise, you just pick it back up and tighten the knot right all the way underneath. And make these sections in the exact same way otherwise. And these also are going to need four beads on either side because they're going to also cover the distance of two beads in the middle there. So it's going to be the exact same as before. Now do four beads, like I said, on either side. Attach them in the middle underneath that bead in the middle. And then do the same thing again with the next bead, which is then silver which is also going to need four beads on either side. And then once you get to that point, I'm going to show you how we then start to finish off this section in the middle. Now I then kept going here until I caged in that very last bead in the middle, so I have all four in the middle there. And what I've done is also connected that last section with a single square knot like we've done the other times. But in this case here, what we actually need to do is also use the other two cords from these sections. So I've already done that first knot in the middle using the same cords as before. Now I'm going to take the other one from either side and simply also just do a square knot around that middle cord and that just tightens right below the first one that we did with this section. Just so we get these cords finished off nicely as well. Tighten that and then we can bring them up to the side because we're done using them for now. And then now what we need to do is make the final little section here. And that's basically going to be equivalent to the first one because in the last three sections, we've done four beads on the sides there, whereas the first one we did three. So in this case here, it's going to release the new top two on either side and then bring them down over the top of the other ones. Because this is also, we're now out of beads in the middle there. So we have a short distance for these sections on the side to travel so that means we again need to do three on this section as well so just like before just make sure you separate out your cords and then what you want to do is just do the section in the same way but do three beads on either side just like the first one and again you can just connect them underneath there and again when you go to fasten them in the middle there you want to first of all use the inner cord from either side to make your square knot just like all the other times. Again, just retighten that first half. And then secure it in place with the second half. So that knot isn't going to go anywhere. And then also use the other cord. So just down over the top of the ones you just used. Bring them out to the side if you want to. 
and also make a square knot with them just like we did in the previous one that I just showed you just so we finish them all off nicely and also so they become equivalent to the beginning space wise make that other half with this one as well and there we go now just like all the other times I like to just release and then just make sure you push everything nice and tight and close together there so we don't have any gaps between any of our knots and beads and it settles in nicely so this is the point we're at now we basically made this middle section a main part of the ring now while I'm in this position here, what I just want to do is continue starting to make the ring band as well. So I'm just going to reattach that holding cord so it's nice and secure. It's not going to go anywhere. And then we basically want to keep using the cords that we just used to make the very last square knot with. So all I'm going to be doing is basically continuing to make square knots. So after the last one we just did, just make sure the other ones are out of the way here, you just pick up the cards and continue making another square knot in the exact same way which then just continues a row of square knots basically which is then going to end up becoming part of the ring band so like that you just continue and I like to usually make maybe around six knots or something after this middle section and then I'll show you the next step after that so now that we made the square knots there for this part of the ring band, what I'm actually going to do is flip my board around because we also just need to start that on the other side. Now to be able to make knots here, because you can see we don't have any cords to work with, I've cut a separate length of cord, just the same cord there, and this is about 40 centimeters. And again, same principle, we want to just find the middle, so put the ends together. And then we attach this, just like we did right at the beginning, also just using a square knot so bring it underneath make sure the middle goes underneath there that holding cord and then just make your square knot to fasten this cord and when you tighten this make sure it goes all the way up underneath as close to the other knot here in the end as possible and once you tighten you can also help push them together and then just do the other half of the knot really tighten that in place so it's fastened now and then you just use these lengths here to make the equivalent amount of knots as we did on the other side so just do that and when I have those knots in place all I'm going to do now is release my piece from the board and now before we move on and make any more knots here what I like to do while this is still open before making a full complete ring is get rid of some of these cords because it's easier while it's still open like this so make sure all the cords on the end there so the three cords on that end and the three on the other end keep them because we still need to use them but the ones I'm just flipping it around to the back that are coming out from the end of the beaded section there I want to get rid of all those so how I'm gonna do that is just a few at a time make sure all the others go out of the way so I don't get rid of the wrong ones and then first of all I want to cut the ends down so where they're coming out from, they're coming out from some different knots, obviously. And you want to make sure you cut fairly close to where the cords are coming out from those knots, but not all the way down. So you leave just a couple of millimeters or so. Like this, cut them off. And then I take a lighter here to singe them down because I'm using a synthetic cord, I can do this. Now, obviously be careful because it's a naked flame and it does get hot. So you can literally just melt them down and then push them in either with your finger or the lighter. Now you can use glue if you don't like using a lighter or using a natural cord you just want to add glue to where they're coming out from and cut off the excess. So now we need to start bringing the ends together here so we can make it one full complete ring. So what I'm going to do is just flip it over to the back again and then we have three cords going to either end of it and on either end we have two of them are the working cords, so the outer two, and then that middle one is the holding cord, and the same on the other end. So what I'm going to do for now is take the holding cord on either end, so that middle one, and then start bringing them together, 
and then basically have them overlap so they end up laying next to each other like this. So just cross them over like this, you can see they lay next to each other. Now this part here can be a bit fiddly because everything is still loose but just till we get one or two knots made. So now I'm going to do it, it doesn't matter what side you then start from, I'm just going to start with the side that I'm already at. We need to continue making knots here but incorporating both of these two holding cords now. And what I'm making sure to do is that this holding cord is coming underneath the working cord whatever side it's coming out towards, it doesn't matter. And then I try and keep hold of them and then use these working cords on this side here. Make sure you start from the right side so look at where your last knot finished. Whatever side where the cord seems to be coming more downwards towards the back of the knot, that's where you want to start with. And then just make a square knot again with these two working cords, as you can see it can be a bit fiddly. Then the other one comes over and then through the ring band to go underneath it all. And then just make sure that, that second holding cord stays in there with the other one. So that's now going to get trapped on this side here. And as you tighten this, it tightens all the way up below the previous one on this side. And just do the other half as well. Making sure again to catch both of the holding cords, just like that. So already now it's going to be far easier to work with because this has now captured one of the holding cords. But what I'm going to then do is flip it around and do the same thing on the other side here, the other end. So again we already have this opposite holding cord crossing towards it. And again make sure that they stay flat next to each other so they don't kind of start to crisscross over. And make sure that that comes underneath the working cord as well. And again make sure you start with the correct side to make your next knot. However you need to hold it, you can also, if you find this a bit too fiddly, pin it down, if you find that easier. However you need to work with it, and pull that length through. And then just make sure before I tighten this that they're still lying flat next to each other, those two holding cords. But otherwise, tighten this knot all the way up below the previous one as well. And of course, just make the other half of it to complete this knot as well. And now we have both of these holding cords. We first of all have so we have two crossing there in the middle as holding cords, but then they're coming out more or less inside of the ring band there. So what we need to do now is make some more knots, just continue the rows as they are, and that's really also where we can end up deciding on the size. So you basically just on one side, keep making knots here. Just do your next square knot. And obviously, how many knots you need to make, it really depends on the size that you need this to be. So what I recommend that you do is you make a few. And then, just do the other half here. You'll want to basically measure it, because you can then still make more, or if you've done too many, take them away if the size isn't quite right. So I'm just going to do a few knots here on either side. So now as you can see when I made those knots we still have this open gap between them so this is where we now need to bring it more together and also we can then adjust the size if we need to. So to do that I like to use a pair of flat nose pliers sometimes because you can get a better grip than this isn't a whole lot to grab onto with your fingers whereas a flat nose or chain nose pliers, you can really get a good grip on there. So basically what you need to do is get to the cord that's coming out from inside the ring band. So that is the holding cord that's going through there. And you also have the equivalent one on the other side, but just do one at a time. And then I grab onto the knots below it. And you basically wanna pull. So you end up bringing those two ends together. And we'll go to the other side and do the same thing because Right now, obviously, that's kind of a, this little loop. That's the holding cord on the other side. We need to tighten that up as well. Same principle. Pull at it while holding onto those knots. 
you can just make sure it's pulled all the way tight and now this is then where you can try it on to see if it's the right size because we haven't completely finished it off yet whereas if you find that it's either too little or too big you can open this back up again so just pull the two ends apart and then if you need to make another knot or two on either end there or even take a knot away if you've ended up making it too big so that's how you then adjust the size so all that's left to do now really because i'm happy with this size here is to get rid of all these excess cords. Now, we basically do this in more or less the same way as I showed you before. Open the beaded section. In this case here, like I said, I'm using a lighter. You can also just add glue around where the cords coming out and then cut off the excess. Because I'm using a synthetic cord, I like to kind of use a lighter because it makes it a little bit more seamless, but also it seals it in place. So again, I go in, do a few at a time, cut off the excess but making sure I have just some short little lengths left and then I singe them down and you can use the lighter to push them down or your finger as well and like I said just like before be careful because it is a naked flame same thing with the ones on the inside here you just cut off the excess and then I like to get my lighter in there and then bring it down obviously holding it upright because the flame will be going straight up to try and avoid singeing and melting any of the others beads or cord around there and then once you've got rid of all that excess cord you have your finished ring so now I completed the ring here this is then what it looks like and it's ready to wear so we have that main feature part with the beads that gives a nice effect there on top of the finger. And then it goes all the way around with a ring band and it seals nicely. And it's also really nice and comfortable to wear because obviously it's cord, so it just molds to your finger and it's nice and soft. But then they look like this. Now I just made one in both black, as in the tutorial, and then also one in white, so I have a complete set for both of the colors. So these are mine. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial here. Please feel free to check out the other ones. I'm gonna have a link to a playlist with the tutorials for all the other pieces in this set here down in the description box below so you can check that out but otherwise thank you so much for watching this one and i'll see you in the next one